Today I am wiring all the components that goes into the center console. All right, so what I got set up here is my wireless unit, a power supply, and this is a reversing relay. And I got my up and down buttons. One illuminates white, one illuminates blue. So when I turn this on, see that's white. That one's blue, hard to tell on the camera, but it's blue. Um, and this goes to the motor of the powered windows. So when I click one of these, you can see the light turns on. Click the other one, the opposite light turns on. And right now, just as a trigger, I'm triggering it. So what's cool is I saw some diagrams that had diodes in the diagram. So if we go over here, you can see a solenoid, and then we have a diode going to the wireless unit. Now, if you know anything about diodes, there's a 0.7 volt drop across a diode, and the trigger is going to ground. So originally when I was working on this stuff, I was like, well, if the trigger is going to zero volts and you have a diode in there, and yes, it's going to stop the, the flow from going backwards. I understand that's the whole point of it being in there. But if you have a 0 0.7 volt drop, will it trigger because it's not going to zero? Well, it's not about going to zero volts. It's about energizing the circuit and letting the current flow through. And that's what turns on the relay. So you could still put a diode in there, protect the circuit, um, and it's still going to let stuff go through. So that's what we learned today, which is great. And I wanted to make sure that I kind of did a little lab and wired all this stuff up first. So I'm not sitting there making all these decisions and wiring a bunch of stuff up 
And at the end of the day, nothing works after I put this whole loom in the car. So this was a, uh, a worthy thing to do today. And I'm pretty psyched. Everything's working the way that I rolled it out. And uh, very cool. Hopefully tomorrow we can actually implement some of this stuff. So we got our extra line in. You can see a little yellow tab there. Um, I'm actually shocked, but I was able to get that all buttoned up, which uh, with two clamps going two different directions. So that was definitely a worthy thing, and it's all rubber grommeted, so that's great. Uh, we got our dryer in. We got all our wires uh, coming into that, which is great. Um, and then I uh, just laid in the uh, return fuel line. The only thing I have to do up front now is uh, put a sleeve on top of this, which I think I'm going to get some sleeve from the back of the car once I'm finished doing the back of the car. And then after that I can actually hook up the alternator. Uh, in this scenario, I'm only doing a, a single line on the alternator, so I just pulled the other wire back just in case in the future that's not true. And uh, at some point I'll probably tie this back a little bit, but I'm kind of waiting to see how it all plays out there. So, front of the uh, car is finished basically. So now what I have is this nice new hot wire coming in. That is gonna go to here and then we got all these other lines and stuff, grounds, tons of grounds. We got the heater system, which is right here, all coming in. We gotta get that going. And then the whole relay and wireless and door popper relays, and it's it's gonna be crazy. And so I was kind of looking at it last night and I'm like, Man, I, you know, and, and honestly, it's not, the wiring is not a big deal. It's where does it go? <laughs> That's the biggest issue. You know, I'm running probably another full line like this. And originally I had a, uh, a clip in here that was going to, you know, do one or two wires. Great. But now I'm going to have wires coming up this whole sidewall, basically. So I'm going to have to create something that will 
hold all this in place because the last thing I want to do is have it all ripped to shreds. Um, so uh, I think I'm going to start in this area, clean all this up before I start adding new stuff. Um, now the idea was is I could put as many uh, connectors on these posts but the reality of that is you know there's no way I'm gonna get 16 connectors on the ground in this area and it's looking like there's gonna be 16 or 13 so it's 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 large it's in the it's in the tens um, so some of that stuff I'm gonna to have to solder beforehand streamline it down to one or two or three cables coming to this and I'm gonna to have to you know do it by system or something so at least if I remove a system I'm removing one cable and the system comes with it with five extra grounds or whatever it is so that's kind of the philosophy I'm thinking of and I just gotta kinda of figure out I've been so focused on the front end it's like okay now we gotta reassociate myself with this area and see what we could do with it so that is the next step.
All right, so as I said, I was gonna start working on the wiring inside there. However, when I was looking at my charts to kind of see what was going on, I noticed that I really need to get an idea of, you know, I can't do 16 grounds. I gotta combine stuff and all that. And so as I was looking at my charts, I was like, well, you know what? All the positives and all the negatives for the LEDs of my uh, power window switches, those could all be trunked down. So I went ahead and started trunking those down. And then as I was going through that process, I'm like, okay, well, what else is in my center console that needs to be, you know, down to a negative and positive? Can I marry it with something else? And so I got a USB charger for the phone that's actually uh, married into the positive and negative of the switches. Uh, and again, this positive and negative of these switches do not actually control anything. It's just the LEDs. So then I was like, okay, well, what else is going on? Then I was like, well, I need to do the wireless, but the wireless is going to be controlled by a relay because once the car starts, I want the wireless to be defeated so my doors don't ac accidentally open up uh, via solenoid. Um, so I decided to wire up all that. Now what's really cool about it is how you would normally do a uh, relay wire up for a normal like four pin uh, relay. Um, we're not using that. We're using the opposite. We're using a five pin. So this is on and then as soon as power gets sent to the relay it actually turns it off. But it turns on one other leg and that other leg is going to actually go to uh, this is actually the control leg the other leg is going to go to a uh, warning or we'll say, you know, an LED that says, hey, your your system is defeated. So that way when I'm driving the car, I know that that system is defeated and the relay is not uh, in the wrong position. So that just, you know, I want as much security as possible with suicide doors, you know. Um so then after I was getting through that process, it was like, well, I need to wire up these uh, switches and two parts of the switch is connected to one wire. Well, let me truncate that. So, you know, started getting that all put in and then it's like, well, let's do the wire for the actual control signal. And so now I have, you know, brown, yellow, gray, green, white, blue, pink, orange, and that is all descriptive of what needs to go into the loom, into the back of the car, which of course will have more relays. So this is actually back here, but I just drew it up there. So, um, so those relays will be more of these pigtails. So this will be our door solenoids. And then this is our reversing relays for our powered windows. And that will be at the end of these wires. All right, so I just did two extra modifications. Um, one is, as I put a diode 
uh, across two lines on the relay so every time it's triggered I don't get a backlash of voltage going the other way. Uh, it's just kind of a nice safety. Um, uh, but the next one was I added a wire so I got one more wire going on our loom and here's the reason why. So originally I had all one hot continuous at all times, it never turns off. Goes to power my relays for the windows and the relays for the solenoids of the door. And then I was using a relay to, once the ignition's on, it turns off the wireless unit, therefore your doors can't be triggered. That's a nice safety. However, I was sitting there going, well, hold on a second. These are live at all time, ready to trigger. Now it needs to have a ground switch for it to trigger, which the probability of that's probably, you know, one out of a million, but they're still live, which means possibly the door could trigger somehow while I'm driving down the road. So what I, this modification of wire is, is now the power of these relays is actually coming from this same power that's turning off the wireless. So that wire is now coming down and powering these two relays. And I disconnect this here. So now this is going to that relay. And then this is the only ones going to the 12 volt. And it's a heavy duty wire. So it has enough, uh, you know, amperage to uh, control those up and down motors. So that's what I just implemented. And I'm really glad I did.